Hello guys, how's everybody doing today? How are you guys doing today? Thank you for tuning in to another profound knowledge and information in this live today about manifesting your desires. That's right, so you can put your consciousness into any reality you want or you desire. This is today's lecture. We're going to deep dive into quantum mechanics so you can get a better understanding of the world you live in and how it works. So uh, many of you have been asking me questions about quantum stuff. So this is the platform today that we are going to do this. Hey, what's up? How you doing? God, oh, you're listening to me every day. Oh, that's so awesome and great. Thank you so much. Here again. Yes, yes, yes. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for my your time, Mark. But thank you for listening. And uh, for me for putting this information out. I just ordered your root clean slate. Yes, you know what? That's what I was going to talk about today. I don't have my bottle with me today. But every one of you on my channel should be using the root clean slate. That's what I've been using. You know how profound and good it is. It detoxes, clears. It's the most powerful thing for your pineal gland, man. It really helps. I can attest to that. Dreams, vivid dreams. You want vivid dreams. You want more energy. You want better clarity. You want a healthier body. The root clean slate is the move. You know, Mark doesn't Mark doesn't endorse a lot of stuff. So if you hear me endorsing this, this is really, really important. It's really good. You, you A lot of you guys use it. So continue to use it. I'll put the link down there. You'll see Get Your Root Clean Slate. It'll be in the pinned comments with all the other stuff, school platform, and etc. So definitely Root Clean Slate. It will take your manifestation to a next level. It will put you in a different game, all right? So I'm glad you guys are using it. All right, so uh, good. You just ordered your Root Clean Slate. You get it in the mail. Good, good. Let me know the results, guys. Comment below. Now remember, give it about two months now, right? uh to take full effect but uh the results i've got have been overwhelmingly great and brilliant okay what a perfect day today is yes and it's now are you right you guys ready to get in to get into today's lecture get your notebook ready so i'll make this as simple as possible for you and keep in mind that what we talk about here today is both science and spiritual so you can take your own time and research as well so we, we're not doing any speculations here we're doing according to what science says is possible and is actually happening now can we manifest longevity of over 100 years yes it comes down to your telomere if you can get your telomeres to stop shrinking you can live to a long long time up to hundreds of years 150 years maybe the most you can get to that. that's a lot of time for a human being by the way your telomeres were genetically engineered to live a certain age something or someone engineered our telomeres so our telomeres wouldn't go past a certain number of years some people said it was the Anunnaki that did it to prevent humans from getting to be really really smart but that's another video we'll have to do is clean slate okay during pregnancy? L I wouldn't advise you to do it during pregnancy. Um, I think it's okay, but let me double check it. What you can do, you can read the website, the link, I'll put the link and the website questions you can ask, but I'm pretty sure, but just to double check, you wanna make sure it's overall, it's very, very safe. All right, so let's begin, all right. While, while I'm talking, you guys can say everything you want, yes. Dr. Wallach says we can live to 125 uh, year, right? I'll touch on that too. Okay, so today's the basis is quantum mechanics. So here we go. Quantum physics basically says that uh, we live in any multiple realities or multiple realities exist at the same time. So there are infinite amounts of realities that exist at the same time. And what happens is uh, a measurement causes a reality to collapse. So the most the most important thing in quantum physics is the measurement. The measurement is the observer. So it says that a particle exists in a certain state called a superposition state. A superposition state is a fancy word 
for saying that every possible reality or outcome exists as a mathematical proportion. So what happens is when a, when a measurement happens, it's collapsed that certain state into one state where you live in. So with enough energy and focus, you can actually bring a reality into this reality where you live. Okay, quantum physics also says that the time doesn't exist the way you and I are comprehensibly uh, used to time. Time exists as all moments, different moments in a block. In, e in each of these moments, it has its own set of circumstances, its own set of events, its own set of things playing out. Quantum physics also says that you exist in these moments and every moment you exist it never goes away it is somewhere in the field so if you can look down on the field from up down into the universe quantum mechanics says that there is a point where your birth is happening there's a point where you're going to school there's a point where you're graduating from high school there's a point where you're getting married and there's a point where you're already dead and you can all, all of that is still happening now quantum physics also says not only is that happening but you can change points so the point where you went to high school is still there but instead of going to high school you change and you went to a private school that still um, embellishes and stays in the field and there's a point where you're dead two times there's a point where you're dead a million times there's a point where you're dead a billion times there's a point where you died a trillion times There's a point where you died infinity and all of that is still in the field quantum physics says that information you cannot destroy it nothing can ever be destroyed so everything that has happened is still imprinted in the in the field somewhere now the most important implication of quantum physics it says quantum physics also says I'm making it simple so I just so you know you can go in and do the deeper diving but I'm making it very easy for you to understand I don't have to go into like Heisenberg on certain principle and all this other stuff so quantum physics also says that um, you and I aren't real as we think we're real. Quantum physics says that you and I are basically streams of information similar to a hologram that's been projected from somewhere else. Quantum physics says there's not only one dimension, but there's multiple dimensions that exist. Quantum physics also says that the universe or where we live in is not known as a universe, it's known as a multiverse. In this multiverse, all universe exists like bubbles. When you take your little thing, soap thing from your kids, and you blow the bubbles to it like this, you go, whoosh. see all those bubbles? Imagine all those bubbles, but imagine an infinite amount of bubbles. Each one of those bubbles represents our universe. What happens now, when you blow these bubbles like this, imagine all these bubbles floating around. When one bubble touch another bubble, the bubble explodes, right? Well, what happens is when one bubble touch another bubble, it creates another universe. That's where you get a Big Bang. So the Big Bang we see was from two bubble universes touching each other, and the Bang created our universe. And this is quantum physics says this is happening every single moment of every single second. Okay? Quantum mechanics also says that uh, you and I are not really a material or a physical being. Quantum physics says, matter of fact, nothing in the world is a physical thing. Nothing really has mass. Mass is actually an illusion. Quantum physics says the particle that makes you and I is transparent, hence you and I cannot be transparent. So quantum physics says all we are is the measurement experiencing the field. The act of measurement creates our reality. So what does that mean for you? So what it says, if you're listening to what I'm saying to you, I am saying to you that the most important thing in your world is your attention and your focus. What, what you measure becomes reality. So it's not really about what you do or what you say, it's about what you think and what you focus on. It's not about who you know, it's about what you're focusing on. Your focus will create a reality that matches it. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? Any questions on that? Okay, quantum physics says that reality actually does not exist until it is measured. What is a measurement? You are a measurement. A measurement is a being or a force that has awareness to see and observe 
an event. That's called a measurement. Measurement is consciousness. So far, so good? Okay. Now, when the measurement measures something, it picks it up from a field. Quantum physics says there exists an invisible field, and in this field is where all the materials are produced. It is called the unified field. This field has all the energy that it needs to create worlds. What is this field? It is what you see around you right now. It's the space around you. It's everything. It's non. Uh, you can't see it with your naked eyes. Quantum physics says when you become a human being and you're living on the earth or you're living in the US, the UK, worldwide, Australia, and you're living in your city, your town, and your province, quantum physics says that in your town and in your province, in your city and in everywhere you're going, you're only ever seeing about 5% of real reality. Quantum physics says it's impossible for you and I to see the full picture. Matter of fact, it says about 97% or 95% of the real truth of reality is hidden from our senses. So when you're in your town and in your school and in your house, just keep in mind you're only seeing 5 to 3% of the truth. Quantum physics says that everything that you observe, when you stop observing them, they collapse back into a mathematical wave function. Every single thing means people, insects, food, tree, furniture, everything disappears when it's out of your vision or your attention. It reappears the instant you come back in. Quantum physics with spirituality. Quantum physics says that spirituality and quant so we want to talk about now quantum physics and how it relates to spirituality. What is spirituality? First of all, spirituality is the belief that all things are connected, all things are one. Spirituality is the belief that there exists higher levels of awareness, highest, highest consciousness. Spirituality believes that you are not a human being, but you are a spirit experiencing a human being. Quantum physics actually goes in line with this. And the most important line that quantum physics goes in line with spirituality is the one about everything is connected. In quantum physics, there's a state known as quantum entanglement. What entanglement basically says, says that all information is not separate has as the way you've been taught actually nothing can be separate because everything is one the only thing separate is the illusion or the belief of separation quantum physics says that matter and what we call non-matter are one in the same so everything that you see around you is the same quantum physics says relates to quantum physics and manifestation now let's go into that. Manifestation is the act of deliberately creating something and bringing it into your experience. Manifestation is when you think something, you visualize something, it pops into your reality. So how does quantum physics relate to that? Well, quantum physics says that you have the physical and the non-physical. Quantum physics says, since in quantum entanglement, that nothing is separate, so everything is entangled. So as, as far as it relates to manifestation, it literally says that whatever you want to manifest, you do not have to manifest it. It's already manifested. What you're doing is you're transferring information from another place into this place. You're transferring non-physical objects into perceived physical object, objects. And you use that with your focus and attention through what we call vibrations or frequencies. Quantum physics says nothing is ever at rest all particles move and vibrate and they give off a unique signature so an example would be water water and steam are the same but they're just in different states steam can turn into water water can turn into steam one of them you can drink and touch the other one you cannot steam is something you can't really see you can feel it you can't drink it water you can drink Let's use another one, water and ice. Same H2O molecules and same H2O properties. Water, you can drink it, the ice you cannot. It's the same thing. That's quantum physics, everything exists 
in a different state until you observe it. Quantum physics says the way things look to you and I. So when you go outside and you see a car that looks like a car, what makes a car look like a car? What makes a person look like a person? What makes a tree look like a tree? Well, quantum physics can also explain this as well. Quantum physics says that is, is the way these particles are rearranged together. So they're, when, they, when they join together, they give the illusion of the car. They join another way, they give the illusion of a tree. Spirituality and quantum physics again. Quantum physics says that everything is connected as we talked about and we talk about quantum entanglement. Spirituality says all is one and the one is all. That is actually correct. So here's how it works. When it comes to consciousness, the observ observation of what you're seeing, all minds are connected on two levels. You have the collective consciousness and you have the collective subconsciousness. The one that you really have to pay attention to is the collective subconscious because that's the one that's easily influenced and that's the one that operates our lives. A collective subconscious is an example of subliminal messages, of subliminal programs. When you watch a commercial and you're seeing the, the, the drink and you're seeing the food and you're seeing everything, you have to be very careful and observe something. That What you're seeing is subliminal messages in action. They will put certain colors, certain textures, certain words, certain sayings will have an effect on your subconscious. It can initiate your subconscious to look for more, to want more, to be more of that thing. So, spirituality now and quantum physics. Spirituality says that quantum physics cannot exist because it is spirituality that created quantum mechanics. Now we actually have more evidence of that because what we're understanding now in the latest theories of science, we're going beyond physics, we're not understanding that the consciousness is what creates everything we see around you. Consciousness initiates quantum physics so we can understand it. Without consciousness, there cannot be any quantum physics. Now, quantum physics now is moving into a different realm where it's becoming now a higher dimension. Now, there are a lot of theories out there that says, and this is the foundation of quantum physics, space and time, space time. Now, we have, now we're seeing that space and time may not actually exist. Space time is just a part of the hologram that our consciousness used to make sense. It's an accessory. It's like your clothes. It's not the truth. So far, so good. Okay, quantum physics and the subconscious mind and consciousness. How to take advantage of quantum physics, subconscious mind and consciousness. Right. Now, since you are aware that the most important thing is the measurement, which is the awareness, is your focus. So how does one measure something in their life? There's two ways you measure something in your life. Number one is through your thoughts and your intention. Number two is how you feel. Okay? How do you implement this into reality? Through imagination. When you imagine something in the mind, it is happening in real time as well. The mind and reality are one and the same. What you see in your head is just as real to what you see in the world according to one part of your mind, the subconscious part of the mind. Subconscious part of the mind can only operate through the mind. Subconscious mind and quantum mechanics. Quantum physics says that since all information is infinite, there's the only portion of the mind that can fathom this, and this is the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is what gives rise to everything you're experiencing. Quantum physics, here's how it works. Consciousness initiates quantum physics. Quantum physics initiate three-dimensional reality. Higher self beyond part of the consciousness. Higher self initiate. Let me repeat it again because you really got to get this. So you may want to write this down. Consciousness creates quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics create the physical world you see. In the physical world you experience a human being. As part of being a human being you experience a logical mind and an illogical mind. 
the, let's talk about the illogical mind. The illogical mind turns on and gives you life. You don't get life from the conscious mind. You get life from your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind makes you alive. So if you want to know what gave you life or what makes what makes you here or what makes you um, aware and alive, it is your subconscious mind. Let's go a little deeper than that. You cannot control your heart rate. What makes your heart beat? It's not you, it's your subconscious mind. Hence, your subconscious mind gave you life. If, you're, if your heart beats wrong or something or messes up, you're gone. So what is the source of life? The heart. What brings you online? The heart. What makes the heart beat? Your subconscious. Hence, your subconscious gives you life. Your subconscious controls your temperature, it regulates your body temperature, you digest your food. So if you think about it, your subconscious is the God. Now, you can control your subconscious, if you didn't know that. Now, let's go again. Quantum physics, subconscious mind. Since the, since the subconscious mind relates to physics, the subconscious mind has an infinite amount of storage properties. You cannot overstore in the subconscious. Hence, according to the many world interpretation in physics, it says that everything exists in a simultaneous state. Your subconscious mind actually can have access to these different realms of realities. This is why you're able to pull them in, and this is why you're able to experience them. Quantum physics and God. Let's talk about that one. So, is there a one deity God that sits up in the sky? Quantum physics says no. Is there a God that controls you and I? Spirituality says no. Any questions on that? Any you want to jump in? I mean, this may be a touchy subject. Again, we're using physics and we're using spirituality. So this is the time you want to do a rebuttal. Go ahead. Quantum physics says you are all gods experiencing a form of a collapse of a wave function. Your measurement experiencing itself. It says you are God within and there can only be one consciousness split in different proportions. Got it? So God and the other stuff was an invention by religion and man. Here's another profound one. <clears throat> Quantum physics and destiny and purpose. Since the only thing that is real is the measurement and the only thing that creates measurement is a consciousness it means the only thing that is here is consciousness someone comment God is real bro that's correct God is real for real it's you you are real now if you're talking about another God then you have to show me evidence or proof of someone else outside of you okay if you can do that I'm, I'm on the ship with you but as far as I know and as far as I experience, the only God that exists is the God within me, my consciousness. Everything that I've ever experienced, everything that I want to experience, it is caused and created by me. Actually, let me get deeper than that. It's actually through my subconscious mind. And I will give you an example when you go to church to show you what I'm talking about. There was an instance I remember when I was at church. And when I would go to church, and the pastor would talk around and ask people to donate their, their, their tithes. There was one lady there that she didn't have enough to donate her tithes. And the pastor, after everyone donated their tithes, he would talk about how important it was to give money to God. And he also talked about if you didn't give money to the God, then your life and things would, wouldn't go well for you. Okay? So one particular time, I was in church and I don't think my mom had enough to give tithe. She didn't have enough tithe. But that resonated with me. I was about 14 or 15 years old and I was learning to drive. 
and what kept going in my mind was like, man, we didn't have enough money to give the church. Something bad's going to happen. So I'm in my car and I'm driving. And as I'm driving, I came to a stop sign. When I got to the stop sign, there's another guy that stopped. I had to ride away. Of course, I went and he ran into me. Immediately, everyone says, well, Mark, you know why that happened, right? You know what happened? It happened because I didn't give my tithe to God. That's what I thought. But I have news for you. Church is so smart and intelligent that they know what they're doing. It wasn't God. It was my subconscious mind. I put a program into my subconscious mind that says that if I didn't give tithe, something bad was going to happen. My subconscious mind is illogical. My emotion was strong. Hence, I'm driving my car, boom, something happened. I caused that. My subconscious caused that. When you're in the church and you say, oh my, preacher, the preacher tells you if you don't do this, something bad's going to happen. He installs a program into you. It's a doubt. That gets into your subconscious mind. Okay? So it's your subconscious mind that creates all of this thing. Religion can be a guilt. Okay, now, any questions on that? Astrology and quantum physics. How does astrology fill, fill, uh, fills into quantum physics? Astrology fits into quantum physics the following way. Since everything is energy, energy can be measured. Someone asked me, so can we cause death? Of course, ask Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard predicted his own death at 67 years old. You can cause life and you can cause death based on your subconscious. People, you have to remember what we're talking about. We're talking about an illogical mind. You can cause a disease in yourself and you, you can cause healing in yourself. The subconscious is illogical. It does not care. It does not have good or bad. It's just an information processor. You can cause life and you can cause death. Remember, oh, this is even in the Bible. The power of life and death is in what? The tongue. You're learning. Good, good, good. Keep going. All right. Got it so far. Questions on that? Anyone else? Jump in. Jump in. Okay, quantum physics and astrology. The way quantum mechanics relate to astrology, astron astrology is the following. Since, oh, thank you for the level element. Since energy has resonance and frequencies, it vibrates. Everything gives off a, a frequency or an energy signature. Energy is what makes us move. Energy is invisible, you cannot see it. So on certain days, you notice you get up really feeling high vibration. On certain days you get up, you don't really feel high vibrations. So we live in a three-dimensional sphere or world. So we're occupied by what's called our solar system. Within the solar system that we inhabit, there also exist other planets. These planets occupy orbits, what's called gravity. Gravity is mass being pulled on by space-time. It exerts a force, hence we call it gravity. When these planets move, they interact and they affect everything, including the Earth. That's where astrology comes in. That's the only thing with quantum physics and astrology. Astrology can never tell you your true destiny. Astrology can never tell you exactly what will happen in your life. And here's why. Because a particle, it can be in two places at this different time, and you can never pinpoint a particle. Hence, you have a free will. If there wasn't free will, I could tell where a particle is at every time. You cannot tell where a particle is going to exist. A particle can pop over there, over there. What we have is our best guess. So what astrology does, astrology is basically a blueprint. It kind of shows you a pattern that may happen, that is likely to happen, that has the opportunity to happen, but it never can happen until you say. So my advice for you guys is do not go and follow your astrology day to day because you are missing out on the opportunities. If someone astrology says, 
oh, your son signs in so and so, you're going to have a, bad, a lot of financial problems. This is the time to do that. Your subconscious hears that, you will follow that. So it's not really about it. But as far as science and astrology, the only thing astrology and physics have in common is the energy displacement. That astrology says when the sun is a certain time, yes, it can affect you. The planet is a certain time, yes, it can affect you because it's energy. It can make you feel a certain type of way, but it cannot tell you what your true purpose or destiny is. Now let's go into that one. Purpose and destiny. I've been doing this all for about five years. As you go through life, you will become evolved. There are things you will learn and things you will dislearn and things you will put aside. And here's a profound thing that came to me. I'll get into quantum mechanics and ghosts in a minute. Here's a profound thing that came to me when it comes to purpose and destiny. Now, there is a thing called your overall purpose. So anyone knows the overall purpose is, or what is the overall purpose? I bet you don't, because no one ever taught, taught you this. I think anyone know, no one knows this yet. But here's your overall purpose, okay? There's call, you have what you call overall purpose, and then you have what you call life purpose. Okay, anyone ever heard that term before? Life meaning, life purpose, overall purpose? Okay, let me break it down and show you how it works. Overall purpose is your existence. You're here to exist. That's your overall purpose. The fact that you can open your eyes and see everything around you, that's your purpose, your overall purpose, to exist. When you exist, you create experiences. You got that? I'm going to go into why you're here. Okay, why you're here is because whatever you want to be here for. So let's go into purpose. Your purpose will not come from a divine being. Your purpose doesn't come from your higher self. You will get ready to write this down because this is going to change your life. Your higher self is you from a different realm. Your purpose is whatever you say you want your purpose to be. If you're sitting around waiting for purpose, you will be waiting a long time because it doesn't exist. Purpose exists until you bring it into existence. So your purpose is whatever you want it to be. An example, if you want to sit at home and watch YouTube videos and become consciousness, that will become your purpose because the, the universe will mirror back to you as that. If you get up one day and you say, I want to change the world and I want to motivate and inspire people, that will become your purpose. If you get up one day and says, I just want to play video games and make money, that will be your purpose. If you get up one day and you say, I just want to become more healthy and I want to make money being a health coach teacher, that becomes your purpose. Your purpose becomes whatever you want it to be. Okay? Questions on that? I see someone wrote down here, crazy philosophy. Can you, can you enlighten me on how this is crazy philosophy? I'm open for that. When you comment, well, maybe a lot of butts here too, but people will comment stuff they don't have any understanding of anyway. Okay, now... higher self and the laws of physics higher self operates as part of consciousness being streamed to you now let's go into the purpose equation and to give you more a sight on why you can create your own purpose and it doesn't matter here here's a very simple answer to that I'll go back to the measurement equation quantum physics says Nothing can come into existence without a measurement. Okay? What is a measurement? A measurement is an observer. I am God, we are God, yes. Okay? If there can only be one observer, one player at a time. One player at a time. 
Who is that player? Go ahead. Who is the player? The player have to be you. Go back to quantum mechanics. This is this is very important for you to understand. This is why I'm spending so much time on this. When it comes to the purpose thing. Because someone says this is a crazy philosophy. So I want to explain to them how this is not crazy philosophy and how the science backs this up. Okay. So if you're the only observer that is affecting the field, the measurement. Okay, how can I put this in simple terms? Here we go. If I am seeing the world through my lens internally, which physics says and neuroscience says, that the photons that come in emit out and I see my world, okay? I am the one that has what we call a subjective view of the world, correct? If I have a subjective view of the world, the world will mirror back to me my subjective view. You have that? I alone, subjective view. No outside influence. Following me? No outside deity. No outside being. It's all me, one and the same. My higher self filters higher dimension to my lower self, one in the same. Follow me? So if I'm the only one here collapsing the wave function, whatever I collapse comes into reality. In quantum physics, in the field, the field doesn't have an intelligence, the field doesn't have logic, the field doesn't have judgment, the field doesn't have good or bad. It's information. Follow me so far? So, if I am the only one doing this, so if I decide and I created the word for the record, there's no word such as purpose. You invented that. But let's go to make it sense. So I created and the matrix created the word purpose to give you meaning. I created the word purpose. And I'm the only one in the field. So if I sit around and I said, you know what, my purpose is to just go out there, motivate and inspire people. What happens? Tell me, what happens? That purpose borns. Okay. Now if I get tired of that purpose, I'm tired of motivating and helping people. I want to do something else. I would like, my purpose is just to go relax on the beach and live the rest of my life and chill. That becomes my purpose. I'm tired of living on the beach. I think I want to do more motivation. That becomes my purpose. Your purpose is whatever you want it to be. How simple and plain can I be? If you understand physics and you understand what I'm showing you, you can see clearly how simple this is. Okay? So, if you're someone, you're free. Now you're free. You don't have to wait and walk around and live your life in confusion and depression because you don't have a purpose or you're waiting for something to be delivered to you. Go make your own purpose right now go create the life you want right now because everything is just going to reflect back to you there's no one here to judge you except you okay now the people who don't understand this they don't have freedom as you said right here who said this lisa who says this magic yes Understanding creates freedom. Now let's go into quantum mechanics and human nature. Let's tie them together. We're going to do quantum mechanics, human nature, consciousness, and let's throw spirituality into that. How about that mix? Let's see how we let's see how we explain that one. Quantum mechanics. 
human nature, consciousness and spirituality. Okay, the human being. The human being is comprised of right hemisphere and left hemisphere of the brain. Right, creative, left, logical. The human being is comprised of trillions and millions and billions of nerve cells. The human being is comprised of a processor called a brain. The brain and nervous system act together as one. They send and receive information. These information create what we call emotions, energy in motion. These emotions interact with the unconscious, the subconscious part of the mind, which is connected to the field. In human beings, they have a part in their brain which houses the intellect called the ego. The ego really is created through our reality and our environment and our beliefs and our lives. When the ego was created, the ego was fed by our way of living, our rules, our regulations, our beliefs. Further enhancing the ego is our languages, the words we make up. Comparison, jealousy, envy, strife, fear, doubt, worry, disbelief, time. All of that is a generated, created language by your constituents, your government, your teachers, your preachers, your mom, your pop, your boss, your, your school, your TV, your media. All of that is a generated. All that affect the way you view the world around you. Quantum physics says, with all of that in place, whatever the way you view your world, you create a measurement and it forms a belief. Okay? So when people interact with people, some people will have good beliefs, some people will have what they call bad beliefs. By the way, I have to make this clear as well. In quantum physics and in consciousness, there is no such thing as good or bad. There just is. Okay? Everything exists until you give it meaning. So I got to put that out today. That's the law. All right. So whatever meaning you give your life, for example, if you're out there and you see another person and this person is living a very good life, they may drive a fancy car, they may dress really well, and they may have things going for them. There's two beliefs you could have. Belief number one, damn, I am jealous of that person. Why the hell does that person have all that stuff? I don't like that person. That's belief number one. Belief number two, wow, I would love to be like that person. I would love to have exactly what that person was. Let me go meet that person. Maybe they can teach me something. Based on those two beliefs. Okay? One belief will get you where you want to go. Another belief will keep you stuck where you want to be stuck. I do I, I don't think I have to explain to you which one is one, right? So quantum physics and karma. Energy can never be created or destroyed. Whatever you put out comes back to you. Key, it comes back to you more than what you put out. You understand that? Okay. If you do good stuff, the energy that's going to come back to you will be good. But not only good, it will be spectacularly great. If you do bad stuff, the energy that you put out as bad will come back to you. Not as bad, but as stupendously bad. In other words, whatever you put out, it will come back to you five, ten times more than what you put in. Why is that? Can anyone explain to me why? Okay, so if you see someone on the street and you help them in five dollars, it was your last five dollars, and you give them your last five dollars out of intention because you just wanted them to feel good or happy. You have just planted an energetic seed called karma. So the person you helped five bucks, 
that energy is going to come back to you. So you'll get another five bucks. You won't get another five bucks. You may get a million bucks. You may go buy a ticket and you win a ticket. You may get a break and you may get something bigger. Because whatever you put out comes back to you. And the answer, Lisa Brown got it. Everything picks up momentum. Momentum is a crucial part in the process of manifestation in the universe. So when mass is traveling, when anything travels, it never travels at the same rate. It never holds the same weight. It always creates momentum. Means it will get heavier, denser, and denser. Because as it's traveling, it's gathering energy. So everything will travel and will come back to the source. So that $5 you gave that person is going to come back to you maybe as 500, 500,000, a million. And here's the key. You, however, do not know when or how that's going to come to you. That is already done by your higher self. By you, but in another dimension. So far, so good. Now, when you do something deemed as bad, oh, that's going to come back to you. But it's going to come back to you triple times. It could come back one day, one year, five years, but it must come back. Because the first law is thermodynamics. You cannot destroy remember I told you in the beginning I said every single thing that you put out or ever done or do you there's no delete file it is still stored in the field it just changes form you see what I'm saying energy rules The past are erasing the past. So when you erase the past, what you're erasing is a memory. Is your what you're erasing is the memory of the information. When something happens, when it finished happens, it dissipates. It goes back out into the field. So technically, your past still exists but here's the thing your past only exists in information it doesn't exist as the physical experience that's why we say your past cannot stop you because when it dissipates it goes back into energy particles so it cannot affect you okay it's not there anymore now it's just a memory and the memory is something you can take out and put away because you're constantly moving okay quantum mechanics and ghosts all right Here's the simple answer to make sense to you, Paul. Okay, here's the simple answer I can get into. Uh, quantum physics says you only experience 5% of reality. 97% of reality is hidden from you. That 97% could include ghosts. Ghosts could either be other entities, other beings, other civilization, other forms of uh, energy that we haven't discovered yet. They could be anything. It's an unseen reality. So anything can happen. If you only see 5%, let's use an animal for example. A dog. Your dog doesn't see the same world, see the same way you see the world. You know that, right? The way you see colors, your dog don't see colors. You see true colors, your dog can't see true colors. Your dog sees mainly in black or white or different colors. Follow me? However, you have more the ability to see what we call the visible light spectrum than your dog. Your dog has something you don't have. Your dog has the ability to see or sense something you can't. So when your dog is looking around, your dog can see more reality of the unseen than you can see. So you both are in the same world and same reality, but he's seeing something else. Your dog may, your dog may be able to see what you call spirits. Have you ever seen your dog just looking into space? And get this stuff. That's what your dog is. Your dog could, could see what you can't see. Your cat could see what you can't see. Because their sensory input is different. See how that works? 
Mm -hmm. Do turtles sense my presence? Yes, everything sense your presence. Quantum, phys quantum physics and everything. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about everything. Quantum mechanics says that every single thing have a level of conscious awareness. Even the trees. Even your baby. That's not even a month old or whatever. Not even four months old. Even your cat. Even your keychain. Even your ice cream. Even your sunglasses. Even your money. Even the pebble on the floor. Even the paper. Even the plastic. Even this wire. Even this quarter. You get the point? Everything have an awareness. Let's go back to physics to show you they have an awareness. If you can measure it, they can hear you. They can feel you. If you can't measure it, they can't do any of that. Can you measure a quarter? Yeah, I can see a quarter. Can you see a rock? Oh, I can see a rock. They can see you. They can measure you. Oh, Mark. How, how, how does that make sense? What do you mean? Well, let's go back to physics. Real reality exists as probabilities of existence. If you want to know what real reality is, real reality is every single possible outcome existence as one, and they call that a superposition field. They call it a wave. What is real reality made of? The same particles that make up reality. So they're made of electrons, protons, neutrons. Well, I got that, right? Let's focus on electron. So every particle have an electron. Without an electron, this quarter can't exist. Without an electron, you can't exist. The rock can't exist. So if I put my attention on something, the electron gets aware that I put it on there. That's how the electron becomes what I see. So that means I have to initiate something and something have to initiate back to me. That means, oh my goodness, they have intelligence. They know I'm looking at them. So when I'm looking at them, they're going to act a certain way to show me what I'm looking at. That's called consciousness. Whoa. <laughs> Do you see that now? So even this quarter knows I'm aware of it. Even the turtle knows you're aware of it. Now the question is, how aware are these non, what we call them, or what, how aware are these inanimate objects? They call them inanimate objects, which they have, which they have no intelligent consciousness. How aware are they? I don't know. I don't know if this quarter has more intelligence than me. I don't know if this quarter is on another level of consciousness. All I know is this quarter is aware of me looking at the quarter. The quarter is picking up my energy. That's all I know. For all I know, this quarter could be super intelligent more than me and has a different level of consciousness, a different level of intelligence that my brain can't pick up. And to me, the quarter is dumb, but the quarter may be the most highly intelligent quarter in the entire universe. Same thing with the rock or the tree. I don't know any of that. And to, frankly, I don't think I'll ever be able to know that because my brain and your brain just isn't built to do that. But however I do know, it's aware of me. That's all I need to know. So if something's aware of me, I can make this quarter bring me more quarters. I can make money bring me more money. Because of, uh, the next thing about quantum mechanics shows that when quantum mechanics, when energy becomes matter, it takes on properties. A couple properties it takes on is electricity and magnetism. Hence, 
electromagnetism world. So that means this quarter not only knows I'm looking at him, but the quarter have the ability to repel me or attract me. See? Depending on how I view it. That's a great question. That's what I'm going to go into. So how do I get into the receiving mode? Just use money. How do I get more money? Because since I know that money has an attractive factor and money knows I'm looking at it. So the, the best way for me to get more money is number one, is to love money. If I don't love money, money's not going to love me, so it's not going to come to me because I know it has an attractive factor. So I'm, I'm going to appreciate and love money. So once I appreciate and love money, I match the energy with this money. So what happens now? My unconscious mind, which is illogical, says, oh, this guy is on the frequency of money. This guy has no resistance to money. All it sees is another particle. That's what it looks at. It sees my frequencies matching. It says, all right, man, let me get more of that in your life. And how does money come into your life? Money comes into your life a lot of ways. Money could come into your life like winning the lottery. Like I did, right? Money could come into your life from invention, from opportunities, from other people, from providing services and helping people, right? Money comes a whole bunch of ways. Other people can come give you money. Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. The money's going to come to you. Now let's use, let's use another human being. How about love? You want love? Oh, I see that person over there. I really like that person. How can I get that person to like me or love me? Because we know everything is aware, especially a human being. Another human being is aware of another human being. So if I want to get love, how do I get love? Hmm. How do you get love? What do you think the answer is? Hmm? You get love by being love, by loving yourself first. Remember now, we see from inside out. Someone says manipulation. That's that's allowed in the field. That's a part of it too. By loving yourself. Mark, can you make some bingo and casino subliminals? I do, yeah, I do have a, um, well, not a bingo, a casino. Yeah, I could do a casino when I have a scratch off subliminals. So someone asked, what happens to our consciousness after our avatar dies? This means our body, our three dimensional body. Well, nothing happens to your consciousness. Your consciousness still exists. So the part that was the part of your consciousness that was your avatar goes back to the source, it goes back to the collective or the universal consciousness. And then your consciousness does whatever it decides to do. If it wants to come back and have another experience as an avatar, maybe back in this earth or another earth, but you're still aware that you are this. So what you do is you change levels of awareness. You're only aware as a three-dimensional being, then you go into a higher awareness. But you all, it's a circle, you all come back. Okay, so, guys, see how it works now? Right. So, if you want to use quantum physics to your advantage, there's two things you do. That's right, you're a carbon, you're a carbon suit. There's two things you do. You use imagination and use your vocal cords. Because remember, I told you guys, right? A field exists that is affected by an observer, by energy. When you put energy to energy, it makes it do something. It either makes it attract or repel. Two, the two most powerful forces you have that can move and influence energy is your imagination and your voice. Okay? When you speak something into existence, it comes into existence. 
When you imagine something into existence, it comes into existence. It's quantum physics. We talked about I mean, many, many of you may be joining this live a little late, but it will be up for replay and you can catch the first part of it. So you have to know the matching energy. You have to know the passcode of the universe. The passcode of the universe is knowing the language of your unconscious mind. When you know the language of your unconscious mind, all the doors get unlocked and open for you. So one of the most powerful languages of the subconscious mind is when you speak aloud in question form. The most, one of the most powerful language of the imagination is when you visualize something in the end results. There you go. I just, I just gave you the two biggest tips you can have. See how that works? So you do that, you're going to influence reality around you. Know, reality will start to vibrate and shake up and then become the version that you want it to be. Example. Like someone says here, uh, Kahim says, Why is my life so happy and harmonious? Your life is going to be happy and harmonious. Why is it hard for me to make money? Your life is going to be hard for you to make money. Why is it easy for me to get what I want? Your life is going to be easy for what you want. Why is life so easy and effortless? Say no more. Why is life so challenging and hard? Say no more. I mean, the game is very simple. That's, I mean, that's, I don't know what else to say to you. That's it. What you say, you're going to become. What you think, you're going to feel, you're going to be. How you do it is what counts. If you say, I am happy and harmonious, you won't be happy and harmonious. I am a money magnet. You're not a money magnet. Can you explain to me why? I'll give you a clue. How your minds process information. One mind, conscious and subconscious. What's going on there? I'm a money magnet. Nope. I'm happy and harmonious. Nope. I am loved and adored. Nope. Someone here. Oh, wait. Someone got it right here. Let me go back down. Who is this? This person here. No pro. Go promo. She said that you got it. It's a statement. Statements will always go to the lower mind, which is your intellectual mind. Questions always go to the higher mind, subconscious mind. Oh, I may have to put this caveat so you may know. By the way, your intellectual mind does not create and generate your world. Your intellectual mind observes what the higher mind has generated and sends it to your intellectual mind. Okay, so let's go back. I am happy and harmonious. Can't be because my intellectual mind doesn't create and generate my world. My life is happy and harmonious. Nope. Why is my life happy and harmonious? Yes. Now I'm going to get somewhere. I just asked a question. Where does the question go? Higher mind. What does the higher mind do with a question? Answers the question. How does my higher mind answer my question? Physical, emotional, mental experiences. Physical, mental, emotional experiences. Do you know what that means? <laughs> Do 
Why is my life so happy and harmonious? Physical experience means just what it says. My life must become happy and harmonious as a physical experience. It must make me feel happy and harmonious. Why do I consistently make more than enough money to live the life I desire? Physical experiences. Okay, I make more than enough money to live the life I desire. No experiences. Only logical, constructed thinking on how to get money to make my life happy. How to make money to have more than I desire. That's not a physical experience. That is a mental configuration of how to do it. How to do it and doing it two different things. Doing it physical experiences. How to do it understanding, trying, figuring out a mental experience. You got it? Let's go back again. I have more than enough money to live the life I desire. No, you don't. Why do I have more than enough money to live the life I desire? Yes, you do. ABCs. Where are you going to learn that in school? Nowhere. Unless you're in my school platform. See how it works? That's what I want to leave you with today. See you guys again next time. Happy manifesting.